you know, it, it was a one and done thing when I came into it, but I'm not counting it off that I'll never do it again. All right, guys, welcome to a new episode of the Type 1 Lifting Podcast. I'm your host, Thomas Lennon. I have a returning guest. She is a grid athlete, life coach, and self-mastery coach, Bradley Hansen. How are you doing? Hi, good. Thanks for having me. I'm good. How are you doing? Not bad. No complaints. Thank you for, I know we've been trying to schedule this for quite a while. So it's been oh, like yeah. crazy because obviously like I have two kids and you have like a whole new schedule and everything like that. So I'm glad to, you know, lay sit down and talk to you now. So, but first I do want to talk to you real quick. So I personally, I can't believe I saw in a post recently, you did a bodybuilding competition. So what, what was the whole like purpose of that? And like, why did you even like think about doing that? I did. Yes. Um, literally I have a very extremely long bucket list and like, I love being able to check those things yep. off. Like I have yep. like a legit bucket list. Like it's not just something sitting in my head. It's something that I've had written down. Um, since I was basically like since I grad or since I started college really. So it's been like 12 plus years, but, um, wow. I look back on it in like November ish, um, just cause I like do like a monthly check-in, like what, what's next? What can I like check off the list? You know, mm -hmm. um, a lot of it is travel based. Like one of my bucket list items is like to travel to a hundred different countries. So like every yep, time I remember that, yeah. I'm looking at it. So, um, I was just scrolling through it and I was like, you know what? I was like, bodybuilding has been on there, like a bodybuilding show, a weightlifting comp. Um, and I'm like, you know what? Let's do bodybuilding. I'm in between grid and, um, I'm not doing, I have no desire really to do Wadapalooza or any big CrossFit comp. I'm like in between seasons. I was like, let's give bodybuilding a, a go. It's been sitting there stagnant for 12 years. You know? <laughs> so I'm like, let's give it a go. So I started like the, the training for it in December and then January, I really like, hit nutrition and training and like went full dive into the whole entire process. So yeah, nobody knew I was doing it. And that was the whole purpose. Like I never shared stories. I never told yep. like the only people that really knew were like the people that are at the gym. Like, why are you doing this all of a sudden? Like, where's your, where's your Metcons at? And I'm, so I'm just training for something different, trying something new. So yeah, I did it. It was fun. Got that checked off the list. Nice. So did you, uh, you got a, you got a medal too. So did you, what did, what did you place? I did. So in, okay. So how does it go? So there's divisions and then there's yep. classes within your division. Mm -hmm. So much stuff. Um, so I got first in my class, but then I got second in the division. Okay. So it's like, it's like the div division's kind of like the overall kind of deal. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, so technically I, I qualified for nationals. Um, is I guess what they call it. I, I'm not yeah. doing it. That's in like, a month or so. So I'm not going to do that, but it's a cool thing to say I qualified for a national bodybuilding competition. <laughs> yeah. So, so would you, since you've won that and like kind of second overall, is there another, since you crossed that off your check, your bucket list, is the IFBB pro kind of coming up next for, for this, or are you just, is it like, this is just the one and done thing? You know, it, it was a one and done thing when I came into it, but I'm not counting it off that I'll never do it again. Mm -hmm. um, the IFBB pro. So what happens is like, I guess when you go to nationals and if you make a certain place or something like that is when you get your pro card. Yep. Um, but because nationals is so close to like the beginning of the grid season starting, I'm, I'm grid no. kind of top priority. Yeah. Yeah, of course. Of course. Yeah. So like how, how was the whole process? Obviously nutrition's different. And so were you still doing like cross kind of like not Metcon workouts, but like kind of CrossFit ish workouts to kind of get ready for this competition? Um, no, um, I actually steered clear from all like Metconny stuff, um, stuck to the plan extremely to a T up until like the last few weeks, I started adding a couple more Metcons because I also pushed myself to do a CrossFit competition <laughs> two weeks prior to the bodybuilding show. So I was like, maybe yeah. I should get condition make sure my conditioning and my gymnastics is still up to par. Um, so no, I kind of avoided CrossFit stuff at all costs. It was also like a good timing because, I mean, I've just been doing CrossFit for so long, like all the compounding movements, like, you know, you get older, my knees are achy, my neck's achy, like all my joints, like one issue, like leads to another, as far as like had a wrist injury, then it like slowly started moving up to my elbow and my shoulder. So it was like, everything was like naggy. Yep. So perfect timing because, and, and I actually learned a lot about bodybuilding. I loved 
training bodybuilding. Um, a lot of my aches and pains went away throughout the process. So that was huge just because I wasn't doing all the compounding kind of movement. Um, but yeah, I went full dive into bodybuilding up until that last couple of weeks of just that CrossFit competition really was like, okay, maybe I should try just make sure I still have, <laughs> maybe make sure it can move for 10 minutes, you know, without <laughs> blowing a lung out. But yeah. yeah so, great. so how, how hard, it was, how hard was it towards the end to just to get to the body that you were at, you were aiming for, for that competition? I, cause I know obviously diet and you have to restrict yourself a little bit to get thinner and like looking more lean. And so was that like, was that painful for you or like, how, how was that for you, for the whole experience? Nutrition was definitely the hardest part, which I'm sure it is for everybody. Um, mm -hmm. Obviously you are restricted on calories, but everything I was eating, I didn't feel like I was like starving myself. Like most people kind of assume or yeah. perceive from the outside. Yep. Um, everything I was eating was just like low caloric food. So even though it was like a lot of chicken and lettuce and stuff, I was eating like large amounts of it. So I, I wasn't starving necessarily. Um, towards the end of it, um, I actually didn't know this until I have like a full on like 10 day plan that I followed and my carbs did get really low. Um, I did get really weak, like about three weeks before the show, just because my cars were so like my legs felt really weird. Like even just walking, like I was weak, but, um, yeah, I lost 20 pounds and I didn't, think I, had, I didn't think I had 20 pounds to lose. So I lost a full 20 pounds and 10% body fat in a mere three, just barely over three months. So it was like, it was really, it was a weird feeling. It was weak, but it was only my legs. Like I could still crush like my upper body workouts, but like my, my lip, like my squatting and my strength in my legs definitely felt like it dwindled. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. it was fine. Um, they're back and good to go now, but yeah, that last last week you actually like high carb. So I went from like 90 grams of carbs to like 250 grams of carbs. So that Dang, is, that's a lot. That's, yeah. That's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So I wouldn't say it was painful. It was, I like pain, right? That's what makes you grow. So I enjoyed it. I enjoyed the whole process, honestly. Yeah. It's like a new experience. It's like yeah. something like, you know, you're not used to, you know, yeah. obviously once you get accustomed to certain things all the time, then you're just like, just, it's like mundane. And then like, if you try something new, it's more exciting. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Except for, I will be honest. Um, the day of the show, like you trained so hard for this. And then it's like, it is a very, how do I, anticlimactic experience. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, I'm not performing, right? It's not like you've been training for this and then like something could go wrong. Like, no, you just stand there and flex. And I'm like, okay. Like, so I wasn't even nervous because there's nothing like I've done what I can do. Right. There's yeah. nothing. There's no error at this point, really. Yep. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a little anticlimactic at the end, but the process leading up to it was fun for sure. Yeah. Now, now I'm wearing a t-shirt that says quad God. So I, I don't think I'm the quad God. I think you're the quad goddess. So, um, <laughs> so I know, I know you have a large, larger quad. So were you kind of worried about that going into the competition or like, what was, what were some of the things that you noticed on your body that you're like, uh, maybe I should just like trim this down a little bit to, to make it to make me look good in the competition. Not that I'm saying you didn't look good, but honestly, I don't know shit about bodybuilding. Like there's bikini, which obviously you're really skinny. There's figure, which goes into a little bit more muscular and then physique, which gets a little bit more muscular. So as yeah. far as like, and I actually had someone ask me this question, like, what is the one part of your body? I'm like, I don't care. <laughs> like, I don't care. Like I'm doing this as a bucket list item. I don't care if my one quad is a little bit bigger than my other one, or my calves aren't the size they should be. Like, it's not, I'm following it to a T doing the best I can. So like, I didn't body shame myself at all. Um, what is funny though, is like going into the bodybuilding show, everyone's like, are you doing wellness? Because well, uh, wellness category is all like quad and glute focus for the main part. And then mm, you, okay. you want to be super muscular on the lower half and then not quite as muscular on the upper half, I guess. Um, I didn't do wellness, but every, like every single person was like your wellness, right? Just cause my quads are just so prominent. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, as far as that, like I wasn't going to body shame myself or tell me my arms didn't look good enough or match my legs or any of that. So I was good with it. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I mean, you looked, I mean, I'm a married man, but you did look great on the show. So it's like, I, I was like, this is, I mean, you definitely fit, fit the part on some of those pictures on Instagram that you have. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the next question I have is, um, I know last time we talked, 
you were, um, I think you were designing hats or something like that. I think it was like two years ago, roughly. And then you kind of switched your focus into becoming a life coach. Mm -hmm. Now, like what was the whole process of you becoming, going into becoming a life coach? And were you kind of like inspired by other people saying, Hey, you know, you're doing some cool things. Like I want to do cool things. So what, what was the whole, like, you know, steps making to, to become a life coach? Really? I was so like dishappy with, is that a word? Dishappy is unhappy. Well, yeah. Well, we'll, we'll call that just, yeah, we'll call it a word. <laughs> like, dishappy, whatever. Yeah. Um, I was so unhappy with like my day-to-day -day life. And as a personal trainer, like I was helping so many people reach fitness goals, right? Like whether it be weight loss or strength or whatever it may be, like I'm helping all these people um, reach their goals. And at the end it was like, let's say six months and they've lost their 30 pounds that they want, whatever it was. Um, you're like, cool. Yep. See you later. Yeah. Like, it, and they like, it's like not this huge hurrah. And I'm like, you just create, like you just hit a huge life goal. And it like, it just got me like into the mindset of like, I'm not happy with like my current situation either. Like I reach said and said their quote unquote fitness goals. And it's like, cool, you know, but it's like, okay. So I'm basically like distracting myself from their other 23 hours of the day. Like how can I get them excited about everything else? So it's not just another thing that's like done and over with. Um, and it was really like me being so unhappy to the core of myself and like who I was as a human that I like, I really started listening. It, it really started with like me starting to listen to Jay Shetty podcast. I don't know if you know Jay Shetty. But, yeah. Yeah. yeah, And I know. Yeah. Um, so that was really what kind of started like my huge, like mindset shift and thought process, like change as a whole, just become like a totally different human being. So I was like, so like stuck and living in the past and X, Y, Z, like so many people get caught in. So it's like everything I am, I would classify myself as fitness, right? Like who is Briley outside of fitness? I could not answer that question for literally the life of me. Like yep. I it was nobody. I was mm -hmm an absolutely terrible human in my eyes. So I was like, I, that needs to switch. I don't want to be re related to fitness anymore, even though I'm probably always going to be, and that's fine. I'm glad I could be in motivation in that way. I want people to realize and know that like to be truly happy, you have to flip your whole mindset and framework as a human. Um, and then the fitness and stuff will, will follow later. So I ended up you really using it as like a personal thing. And I took the Jay Shetty course and I'm like, you know what, this is like something I want to, and I made a complete 180 in like, you know, I mean over the last three years for sure, but taking that course, my entire life has changed my entire thought process of every little movement I do now. And like, think is like very strategic. And I'm always asking myself questions. And I was like, wow, like if I can go from who I was to who I am now, like everybody can do this right? It's just believing and having like a good foundation to be able to change and shift your mindset. So that course led me into, okay, how can I do this and help this for other people? Um, and it's a life coaching course, of, you know, so it started off as more of a personal growth thing and it turned into, I want to help others realize that they can do it too. Um, so that's really what happened. And yes, I was selling hats. I had that job for eight years because my boss was cool as shit. Like my boss yeah. was so cool. <laughs> Um, you know, but I was, I learned I was using and I was like, okay, I'll do life coaching on the side until I can get used to it. And then I realized like, I was really just using that as an excuse to like not fully dive. So like mm -hmm. I gave myself, I came up with a plan. I gave myself, I think it was two months. I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to work on hats for two more months. And like, yep. I'm putting in my, my quits. And I had an email written. I was like, August 1st, this was August 1st, 2023. I had this email written as soon as I woke up on August 1st, I sent that email and I'm like, holy shit, I just quit my job like with nothing. Right. So like I full dived and I was like, I know this is what I'm meant to do. It's what I'm supposed to do. Sent that email and probably been the best decision I've ever made. Yeah. Now, now with your boss, cause I know, I know you were, your boss was like, as you said, cool as shit. So did, did they understand what was going on and like with the path that you wanted to take? And they were like, yeah, I completely understand. Yeah. Go for it. Oh, hundred percent. She was like, I can't believe it took you eight years. <laughs> <laughs> She, she told me from day one, like day one, when she hired me, she said, this is not going to be your lifetime job, but she definitely creates like that atmosphere where like people want to stay. Right. So yeah. yeah. The day I sent that email, she was like, so stoked for me. And the only thing she said is I can't believe it took you eight years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's really yeah. cool. It, it's, it's cool to have like boss that knows like 
you're not really meant to this job and then kind of like fi- about when you are about to time to leave they're like okay finally like you know let's let's see what you can do and obviously she's probably like yeah if you need any help just let me know and you know kind of go from there yep that's yep. awesome she that's really cool regularly. she made my she makes my teams my team my grid team hats and stuff so <laughs> that's awesome that's really yeah. cool now now what now how is it now how do you attract clients to you know, come into your program to, to get help. Everything I've done so far is organic straight off my Instagram page. Um, I, I'm learning how important content is, but I'm still like a very much so beginner and learning about it. And it's like more of like that self doubt stuff of like overthinking, like, is this good enough? Is this going to reach the people I want it to reach? Are people going to respond? Are people even going to care? Yeah. Um, so it's kind of like I'm, I'm reframing that right now as I'm getting more and more into content. Um, but yeah, every, everything's organic. Just hopefully, hoping it'll click with the people that need help. Yeah. I mean, you got the perfect room for it with that back, with that wall. So, I mean, you know, just you could talk to people and look really professional, which you are and kind of go from there. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. This is, I actually just put this wall up last week. I know. Week. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I was watching your stories. I'm like, oh, this is that's gonna look so cool, like so cool. Yeah. And then the if if you can get like I don't know if you if you would want, but like get a neon light for that back corner next to the shelves and kind of like have your logo or something like that. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. There's yeah. Some stuff in the works, but the wood's up. So. That's yeah, that's it. awesome. And <laughs> yeah. and I I know I know last time we talked, you we were talking about you starting a YouTube channel. And you have one already, and you're posting your workouts and. You, um, I saw the one, uh, I think the last one you've done about your 2024 goals. And so are you looking to produce more content for that? Or is it just mainly like what you're just focusing on Instagram? You, you know, that YouTube channel started as, as purely fitness and yeah. trying to help people realize that it doesn't take two hours a day to, to just feel better. Um, it takes 15, 10, not even, it can take 10 to 20 minutes a few times a week without any weight or equipment because people because yeah. we really like to help people with the excuses that to help realize like it doesn't take much um yep. i have phased out of that mainly because my editor was really busy um which is fine um we all have multiple million things going on but it's led me into being able to focus more on the life coaching um obviously youtube is is not a it's a very patient, yes, yes. patient thing you need for, for that to build. Um, it is crazy. I actually did build. I think there's almost like, I think there's like 871, 71 subscribers. I, I literally just, I just looked, just turned it on like, like a half hour before we started talking. So yeah, I haven't posted a video on that forever, but yeah, I did post a 2024 goals as far as like a life coaching thing, just to like, see if that would, if that outlet would kind of get me some more life coaching clients. Um, but yeah, I honest, I'll be honest. I haven't really checked my YouTube much. Um, kind of phased out just so I can focus on this. I've also like been really big into learning more about business and entrepreneurship and obviously all this stuff. So trying to focus on a million different outlets is it's not helpful. So I'm like honed in on my life coaching stuff right now. Yeah. So, so my, I, I, I have a little pet peeve about entrepreneurship. So I hate that word. Like that is like the one word I do not like, I do not like for, for me personally, cause, cause everyone uses it. It's like, oh, I'm an entrepreneur. Oh, what do you do? Like, oh, I, I'm working on it. You know, it's just like, not you're not an entrepreneur yet. So I don't know why you're doing it. So it, I don't. I think it, it was like a really bad word in the like '90s and the early 2000s. And then once like Gary V came around and like the entrepreneur word started getting like, like super super cool. So that's why everyone started using it. Yeah, I mean, I can see that. Um... For me specifically, I, I am trying to build like a, a legit business. Well, and- yeah, I mean, yeah, you you got the certification, like you yeah. and you're you're doing it, so it's not like you know you're not doing it and say you have it, like you know have it in your bio or something like that. Right, right, yeah, I, I'm not putting it out as an entrepreneur. Like, obviously, I'm like, no, I'm a life coach, right? Yeah. First and foremost, like the back end of the business, it doesn't matter to my clients, right? That's not what's mm-hmm. gonna telling people I'm building a business is not gonna get me life coaching clients. So yeah. No. I hate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm um, also, you're a self mastery coach. So what's the difference between the life coach section and in that section? 
so life coaching is kind of like the the bigger umbrella of it and then i've like niched down into like self and emotional mastery um, okay really it's just becoming aware of oneself and one's emotions and one's thoughts and trying to be able to disconnect from them because so many people had probably go as far as to say that 96 plus percent of people are very emotional reactors right and then they come back and they're like damn it i wish i would have done x y or z or <laughs> yep. something differently right yep. so as far as self mastery it's it's i'm really helping my clients become like more patient with themselves and like yeah. being able to take a step back from emotional reaction um just so it doesn't haunt them later basically um yeah self mastery and emotional mastery is you know just like just because you feel these emotions doesn't mean you are those emotions true right? you separate, yeah. separate the two is so that's really like what it comes down to as far as like self mastery yeah and, that, and it's almost like in the political space too because like i don't i don't really get in, into politics like that's not that's like one thing i don't want to get involved with but like you see that in in people that are like follow like you know either republican or democrat they get like super emotionally charged if they see like a trump flag or like a biden flag and it's like you know it's like just take just take a step back or take a deep breath in and like just you know it's not really hurting you it's just you know they like that or they like that person so it's like whatever you know just don't don't do anything stupid and to affect you or or them yeah and that's what's crazy is like uh, yeah politics i don't i stay out of i have not been in, into politics for at least four years like just because like they, they said good for you yeah mostly reacting and like it's like by by allowing like doesn't matter which side you're on when you get worked up from the other side you're letting them win right like they're controlling your emotions right now you're letting them dictate how you feel in that moment so technically yeah. you both are like kind of screwing each other over right now right? <laughs> yeah 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 i'm also like politics is a hard hard pass for me at this point i'm gonna focus on me and that's that's it <laughs> yeah and, and how, how do you do that because like obviously like i'll i'll watch the news or like go on twitter or something like that and like see something and i don't get emotionally charged but it just i see that so how how, how did you like you know push away from the politics side and kind of like mainly focus on yourself and not worry about like anything else on the outside world i don't watch the news zero i hardly watch tv at all anymore um i've unfollowed every single news outlet um that's it like <laughs> i just the only things that i've i unfollowed everything one-sided and I've, I've i've unfollowed people that are extremely one-sided that like to shove their stuff um, or their opinions or their thoughts. It's just, it's mm. not, it's not helpful for me. You do you, if that's what you want to do. Like, I don't want you feeling your way to like somehow trigger me into being like, you're stupid or no, you're wrong. You know? So I've just eliminated it. No TV unfollowed everything that will possibly make me feel an emotion that I don't want to feel. Yeah. That's awesome. I, yeah. I, 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 I did do I did do that too as well. Like unfollow like a whole bunch of like news, you know, news media but like obviously like twitter is kind of like my breakfast newspaper like I'll, I'll read it and then like and it's like i don't follow these people but it's like on the for you page or whatever they call it on I, not twitter but x but and it's just like you see it you're like oh, god and then like it's like almost to the point i'm like should i just delete the app and just not worry about it at all yeah i don't know i don't I'm, i don't have twitter or x or whatever you so i don't know i don't i also the only like social media platform i have on my phone is instagram um, I don't even have Facebook or any of that. Like if, if I need to get on Facebook, it's, it's on my computer. So it's like maybe once every two or three days is it. Um, I don't know. I just do my best to avoid it because I know it's not helpful. <laughs> yeah, it's true. So yeah, I need, I, I just, just delete X and just leave it alone and then just kind of put it on my computer and kind of go from there. Yeah. 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 So, um, when you get new clients, like what's the process of like, you know, the first initial phase, like the first face to face, and then kind of like expectations and, and goals for them. So before I get on the discovery call, I have two questions I ask. Um, so before you come a client, like we have to talk, it's a free discovery call. You know, we got to get face to face, make sure we're on the same page, make sure I'm a good fit for you. I'm, I can help you. Um, yep. Obviously. So then there's two questions I ask them before I get on discovery call. And that is what is like the, the primary thing or the most important thing that you want to change or help yourself with, like whatever that may be, whatever realm or area of life it is. And yep. then the second question or the follow-up question is what happens if this doesn't change? 
right? So then I hop on the call. Cool. Whatever their answer is. Awesome. Thanks for the explanation. We'll hop on a call. And then it's really, I just explain that everything we do, a lot of people, well, life coaching itself is a fairly new term, right? Yeah. I mean, yeah. We've had it for 15 plus years, but it's fairly new and it is growing like rapidly. The different, and a lot of people now are relating it to therapy. Um, I'm not a therapist by any means. Um, the, the biggest difference is like therapists try to, or more so focused on your past traumas, you know, kind of help you relive it, let it go, however you want to cope with it. Whereas life coaches are, we see it more as what can I do now mm -hmm. to help me in the future? Um, and I have, I'm a firm believer that focusing on the past and trying to just relive things is not helpful for you going forward. Um, it's like, what can I do now? Because who you are and what you've done in the past, like you cannot change that. Like, sure. There's definitely like, I agree like there's some, some things that will like help you. If you relive that, you can kind of be like, okay, cool. I can let it go now, but like, what can I do now? So that way, you know, my 85 year old self is proud of me later. Um, so really life coaching is focusing on the now. So that way we can make today, tomorrow, next week, next year, the best it can be. Yeah. And I think that's way, like way better than just re like reliving the past. So, cause like you, you could start like, you know, working on the now and then be like, okay, like I need to work on the, I need to change this instead of, you know, that. And so, and it could be like real, real quick compared to like, you know, reliving the past, just constantly thinking it over and over and over instead of, you know, looking in the future and be like, I want to get here. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like focusing on the past is very emotionally draining. Mm -hmm. it, um, it brings up negative and unwanted emotions. And again, like that's fine, but what can we do now in the present to like not be those emotions? Just because you feel those emotions doesn't mean you have to like be them moving forward. Right. Yeah. So it's, it's really just disconnecting from those and learning that like that is in your control, regardless of whether you know that or want to believe that or not, like you, mm -hmm. it is in your control to completely change. It doesn't matter how old you are, you can change anything you want like today. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. And, and how many clients do you have right now? And how many clients are you kind of like tapped out at that you want to get to? I don't think I've tapped out yet. Um, right now I have seven. I think the most I've had at once is nine. Um, but I, I haven't tapped out. Okay. I tapped out. And I think that's more, I haven't got to that point yet where I'm like, I need to create a wait list. Um, I think it's also, it's a very, it's also a very patient journey. You don't get clients and stuff every day. So it's, um, really, I probably need to step up my marketing game and my content game. Cause I, I do realize I put numbers together, like about every two posts I make about it, I get a, a, a discovery call is what I've come to conclusion with. And I'm closing about 70 per I'm doing really good on closing my discovery calls. We'll say that. That's awesome. Yeah. But I'm not, I'm not like, because everything I'm doing is organic. I'm like, and I'm not like completely confident in it. Like I kind of like definitely procrastinate a little bit. Um, so that's more so on me. Maybe I need to market. Maybe I need to start doing some paid ads, something. I don't know. It's a, yeah. lot of, a lot of stuff, but yes, I'm not tapped out yet. <laughs> that's good. Yeah. And, uh, and typically like, is, is it, do you do so? So I, I have one, I have one client right now. That's not like, not a life coach or anything like that. It's just like a, a diabetic that's kind of, you know, manage their blood sugars and like during workouts or like, you know, and just, I'm trying to help them out, like finding ways to, you know, keep their blood sugar at like a normal level. So with you and I, I have like for three months as of, as of right now, because you know, we just, I just want to test, we're just testing the waters. So is it like a, a month to month contract for you or, or is it like a set, like since six months goal or when you do like the, when they would do want to sign up, you they say, you say like, okay, I may have, you may have like, I think you could hit this within like three months. So how does, how does the, like, you know, the length of the, of the, you know, working with the client work for you? The minimum is eight weeks. Okay. Um, and it goes up from there. The package, the package options go up from there, but the minimum is eight weeks because most of, I mean, not even most a hundred percent of people, if like, they're not coming to me when they're 10, you know, like you've been this way for decades. You're not changing overnight. It's just like, I, I always like to relate it because it's the easiest way. It's like, you're not losing your 20 pounds overnight, right? It's a process. So like the very minimum I will allow my clients is eight weeks because, and that's like, we'll just barely touch on like the foundation of like what it takes, right? Yeah. You've been this way forever. 
it's it's not going to change overnight so it's really like the first eight weeks is like just deep diving into why why do you think the way you think yeah. why are you doing what you're doing right and then once you can really figure that out and define that for yourself then we'll start putting like some action and some steps into place so that way you can create the habit to make it change in the future yeah now since you have all these clients and kind of working on their schedule and managing them how do you balance you know working on yourself as well with as well as like working with the clients crazy enough this whole process for me has got me to wake up i do not sleep in past five anymore <laughs> okay That's crazy i am up between four and five every single day like before my alarm i'm like out of bed and i'm doing my myself stuff like i i answer questions for myself every single morning i have this huge log that goes on and i answer very specific questions <laughs> every single day i'll i'll read or write and then um yeah i have a good morning routine where I'm, I'm working on myself first before I even start the day. That's awesome. Yeah. That, that's I, I do that too. Cause I wake up at like four, four, uh, four o'clock in the morning workout. And then like, I'll get home around like six 30 and get the kids ready. But sometimes like, you know, during the summertime when they're not in school, I'll focus on myself and like, you know, get some work done with like the YouTube channel, you know, posting or, or whatever, just to kind of get myself situated so I can actually be more try to uh, try to be more present with my kids and my wife, you know, throughout the day, even though like, you know, the cell phone is just one thing that just like kills me every single time. Cause like, if I get bored or sit down, I'm like flipping the phone, just like checking on social media. And I'm like, I should really, you know, really get to the point of like not doing that. Cause like my, my son's telling my wife, like, Hey, dad's on the, on his phone, like all the time. And it's just like, God, I, I got, I gotta get off of this. The kids ratting me out, huh? It's that bad. <laughs> oh, all the time. He rats me out on everything, everything. Because obviously, you know, you, you know, you know who he likes better. Obviously, oh, my, the the mom. So everyone likes mom first. So oh yeah. So yeah, it's like I get ratted out every single time for like the littlest things. That's funny. I I realize that too. I I get, I catch myself in. I've gotten a lot better at it. I've put the limit on it. Um, like I said, I only have Instagram on my phone, but I've I've set a limit to where like when that limit pops up, it's like oh your limit's done for the day. I'm like oh shit, I've been on my phone for I've been here for. I actually, it's funny you say that. I, it was set at um, 45 minutes. I just, I did like a whole time audit of myself and it's for content. So it's, it's actually crazy timing that we're talking about this. It's, um, I did a whole time audit and people say, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for that. It's like, okay, like I, I lie to myself and say, I don't have time or I'm just overthinking my content, whatever it is, but it's not that you don't have time. It's that you're doing something else instead of that. Right. Yes. Yeah. So it's like, okay, I set my, my screen time for Instagram is 45 minutes a day. And I just dropped it last night to 30 minutes. So it's like, okay, there's 15 minutes where I can sit and get some content done. doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I can just write it out. I can get a lot done in 15 minutes, you know? So it's not too, it's not saying you don't have time because you're just doing something else instead of whatever it is you're, you want to be doing. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's, I, I need to start doing that. I need to start setting time limits. It's like, it's, it, it got to the point where my wife got me a timer for the bathroom. Cause I'm on oh, my phone. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's like, it's like literally like, um, it's like one of those like sand dials, but it's like yeah. a guy, it's like you flip it over and it's a guy sitting on the toilet, like on his phone. And it's like a five minute time limit. Like that's it. And oh, she's my like, God. Yeah. And it's, it's like, I, I'm like, she's like, is, is it, is it time yet? And I'm like, I look at the thing and I'm like, I didn't put it on. And I'm like, oh shit. I, so, but I was like, I, I I'm trying to be more present on like, you know, throwing my phone on the bed or on the couch, you know, instead of getting like completely distracted. Cause, because, you know, I'm, I'm not making excuses, but like sometimes like, you know, you do want some alone time, especially with like two kids that are like under, under nine. And it's just like, you know, they're on you all the time and like, they want you to do stuff. And then it's like, all right, just give me a break. And so like that, that that's kind of like my break, but it's not really the best break to do. Yeah. Yeah. I feel you. I don't have the kid things, but got a dog. Sometimes he's needy. <laughs> well, yeah. 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 And I, and like my kids are asking for a dog too. And they're like, can we have a dog? And I'm like, no, no. Like you can't even imagine, like you can't even like manage your beta fishes. Like, you know, oh. Cause like I'm the one that's feeding them all the time. I, like my wife's like the one that's like cleaning the tank if, if I'm not doing it. So it's just like, 
how are you taking care of the dog? Well, and it's like it. How can you take care of a dog if you can't even take care of a fish? Right, right. So they'll understand one day. <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll see, we'll see. But they they're really like they're really pitching for a really pitching for a dog right now, and it's just like God, like no, 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 <laughs> no. So we'll see, we'll see. I think parents always give into the dog thing at some point. Yeah, I, I yeah, yeah. It's. I, I think I'm going to wait till they get to like seven. I, I wait till at least my daughter gets to be like eight or nine. She's, she's five right now. So maybe four years, but like we had a dog before and he, la um, he made it all the way to like 15 years. It was a yellow lab and, and like we had to put, we had to put it down. And so my wife doesn't really want to go through that trauma yeah. of putting our dog down in again and again and again. So it's just like, I, I kind of understand because like the the last like two years of having that dog was just so stressful and yeah. like the last like month i was literally picking it up bring it in outside letting it do his business and then picking it back up and then bring it in inside because his hips were like his back hips were so bad yeah yeah that's the sad part about it <laughs> yeah and it's like and we had to feed it like cbd treats just to kind of like make it high as a kite to relieve the pain and it was just like sleeping on a bed the bed the whole time so it was just like right it's not yeah, it's you know that like, yeah, process yeah so we'll we'll see I, I i i hope we don't get one so but that's just my opinion i think it's a cross for you <laughs> yes <laughs> but but um but um i was gonna say so um i know we talked earlier um in i know you actually i looked at your instagram page too as well you you actually did a high rocks competition mm -hmm. with with heather hudson mm -hmm. um what you know, obviously that's completely different from grid league CrossFit. So like, what was your experience of that? And what made, was that like another bucket list you wanted to check off? Man, that was awful. <laughs> high rock is awful. I am not a runner. If you like running high rocks is fun. Um, uh, but I am not a runner. Um, no. How did that come about? No, we met someone and they, they said, we'll get you guys. It was the Miami High Rocks. Um, they said, we'll give you guys some entries. And so we're like, shit, why not? You know, me and Heather mm -hmm. try to do as much stuff as possible together. So we're like, why not? Let's just do that. Let's add that to the list of things that Briley and Heather do together. Um, but yeah, no, we did it. We actually we qualified for world championships. So then we did it again in England. We mm -hmm. went to Ma uh, Manchester for world championships and then did it again Um I don't think I'll ever do one again. It was fun. It was definitely a good experience. But like I said, I am like, I'm just, I'm not a fan of running and it's five miles in total. And that's about four miles too much for me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because there's all these like little girls who just crush the run. And then it's like, they're dying on like the, the movements. And I'm like, hell yeah. Like we're done with the run. I get to like push some weight or ski or row or carry some kettlebells. That was like my break while everyone else was like dying. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like we would pass them on that stuff and then they would pass us on the run and then we would pass them. And then, um, it is a cool, it's also very different, but it's also a cool setup. It's fun. It's a good. Yeah. Change do, so, so do you think, do you think high rocks is comparable to CrossFit? Is it like, kind of like, like the same thing kind of? No. No, I, I, I didn't think so. Either. I mean, it does have the, my, for my, my opinion, I think it does have the functional movements of like a skier, you know, you know, the, the, you know, the hang, like a farmer's carries the, the sled push and the, like a little bit of running. But my thing with that is I don't think it's, it's not really constantly very bearing movements compared to CrossFit. It's like the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I, I, I'm pretty sure it might be changing it this year. I did read something, but however long it's been around, it's the, it's the same thing every time. Like it literally never changes. It's always the same race. It's always the same movements. It's always the same distance. It's always the same rep scheme, whatever it may be. Um, and it's also long. Like you're not going to go work out for 14 minutes and then take a break and go again. Like, no, you're, you're moving for a minimum of an hour if you're yep. really good, <laughs> you know? Yeah, yeah. So CrossFit, you don't. You don't ever do that, right? Once yeah. a year you do Murph, but other than that, maybe Chad, you know, but like as far as anything outside of like the hero workouts, you're not doing a, a constant movement or a constant workout for over an hour ever. No. And, and even with Gridley, I, I believe even with Gridley, they, they kind of change it up too as well. It's not really the same thing all the time. Yeah. We change it every, every match is a different format. 
That's awesome. Yeah. So um, speaking about grid league, so um, how was the season last year and what have, what are you trying to do for this year to, to step up your guys game? Um, my season last year was the same as the previous years that I've owned the team. We get, we are doing really good throughout the regular season and then we make it to playoffs and then we lose in playoffs. It's been, <laughs> been like a continuous cycle for the last three years. We can never get past playoffs. Um, what am I hoping to do differently? Was that the question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What like so what are you trying to do to like obviously make it past the playoffs and like and win a championship? Hopefully practice a little bit more. Um I think a lot of it it comes down to like little tiny errors and mistakes during playoffs. Um so hopefully just get the team and I'm also like hopefully being able to kind of shift their mindset and the way they, they kind of go about things rather than just go work out. Let's think about this a little bit. Yeah. You know? try to bring in some life coaching a little bit as to why they're doing what they're doing. And like, let's, let's just not make it go do this movement fast. Like let's do it with intention. And like, why are you doing this right now? Um, that way, hopefully there'll be less error. Right. So not, they're not just running out on the grid and spazzing out and getting no reps constantly. Um, yeah. So that's really the big goal is kind of eliminating the no reps. There were so many no reps in, in playoffs last year. Um, it, it cost us because a no rep on the grid is a make or break every time. Yeah. That's like seconds, seconds it's away from like winning milliseconds. Literally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. so with you guys like doing like the fast, really fast movements and like always go, go, go. So how, do, how do these judges like are able to, you know, count the reps and miss or do like a no rep because you know, they're do you guys are going so fast. How can they, notice like if they have soft knees or if the elbows bent a little bit or if they're not really overhead how, how do they judge judge the competitions so the grid leagues refs are are one first and foremost they are paid and they do training right well these that's are, good yeah are volunteers that just walk onto the grid for the first time like there is extensive training and like video footage that they're like reviewing constantly and there's also refs on the grid but then there's also a head ref on both sides so you have most of the time you have more than one ref looking at you oh good um, okay but it all comes down to their training like they put they like those refs like pour their heart and soul into like reviewing old footage and you know the head refs will kind of judge them like what was good what was bad like how you know but um they are also trained that like if it's on the edge to no rep you don't they don't give it to you so you know, I mean, we're, we're playing for money, so the strict, they have to be strict. So if it's like, if it's questionable at all, they're trying to just say it doesn't count. Um, yeah. Yeah. Well, well, maybe, maybe, maybe CrossFit for the quarterfinals should have two judges judge, judge, judging those people Poor during CrossFit. the step ups. Poor CrossFit. They're getting some, some. Yeah, they're getting right now. <laughs> yeah, well, well, even um, so, I they have like a um, so there's like a, a like almost like a judges league, like, almost like grid league. It's they call ourselves like AFJ. Have you ever heard of them before? No. So, so it's a non it's a non profit, and so what they're doing is they're judging. Um, they're taking it serious. Uh, um, they're so what they what they're doing is is they're they're focusing on it's a on like being official judges for CrossFit pretty much. And that, that's, that's what my, my take on them is. So a lot of like camps like mayhem, um, who else? Um, a couple other camps to use them for, um, for judging instead of using like someone from the gym. And so some of these, some of these judges actually have been at the CrossFit games too, as well as, as like one of the head judges or like one of the main judges in like the, the, you know, five through seven or whatever, like those, those lanes, like where the elite at, where the, you know, top athletes are. And I guess from what I, what I saw was they brought the AFG to the J AFJ to the mayhem camp to judge them. And, and they like those athletes got dinged so hard, especially Paige power. She got, she dropped even like to not even make it into semifinals. And one of the AFJ judges was actually judging her. And so I, I thought it was just absolutely crazy. Like if you can have the AFJ miss, like just having a neutral head, like what are other people missing? And like, how can they be a professional group if they're, if they miss like some slight, 
you know, wording or verbiage like in, in the, you know, the rule book. It's hard. <laughs> Human error is never going to go away. Yeah, um, true. Think about how much money baseball umps and football refs get. And so they still mess up every, every game, every game. There's always bad calls. There's never not a game that is perfectly called ever, ever. Right. So it's like, at what point do you just, it's just ignoring it. Like they're going to complain at all, at all costs. Someone's always going to complain. It doesn't matter. So yep. like CrossFit, it's, I mean, hopefully they're not trying to cheat just to get to semifinals. You know, I, but, I don't, I don't think so. Especially in the mayhem camp. Like I don't, I don't like Paige powers. She was like top 10 in last year's CrossFit games. So it's just like, I don't, I don't think her intent was to cheat because I know probably other people that are in semifinals or quarterfinals were trying to cheat the system to get up on the leaderboard to make a name for themselves. Yeah, I don't know. I think the best they can do is just define the the standards the best they can, and if people don't follow them, then that's what you get for not reading the rules, right? Yeah, I mean true. Yeah. So does does Grid League have like a rule book or anything like that for movement standards, or how do, how does that work? Extensive rule book. <laughs> For every movement there is a there is yes and if you notice if there's ever like any sort of discrepancy on the grid uh, they'll come down to it'll come down to video and then they'll he, he brings out the the rule book every time you'll see him he'll be all on the grid like here's the standard here's the rule that's it there, then there's no question like no argument yeah right yep now now when they do replay is it like all in slow motion just to see if they got okay yeah that's pretty yeah. legit. That's pretty legit. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It's it's getting better and better each year too. Um, yeah. And and it's still a new and you your grid league's still like relatively new too. And it's not like you know, you guys have been around like for like, you know, 40 years or like that. You guys are still growing, which even your social media presence has been absolutely huge. It's been a huge spike. Yeah, it's brand new. It's just getting started. Yeah. And I, I could see some good things coming out of it too, which is awesome. Especially, you know, you have a team that's actually in Atlanta now. Mm -hmm. And so are you guys looking to expand more into like other States and try to make it like slowly grow here and there? Yeah. And there's going to be two new teams next year. So there'll be 10 teams total next year. And the other two teams will definitely be out of state. There's so much interest in, in Texas. So I can probably, say with confidence one of the teams will be based out of texas just because how much interest is there and actually how many players um fly in from texas there is a lot there is a lot of people currently that play that fly in from texas for all the matches so um yeah two more teams next year for a total of 10. um this year is actually the first year we're traveling out of state we are going to vegas all eight teams this year are going to vegas for that's awesome yeah yeah in october it's going to be super fun so um yeah it's growing it's growing. It's cool. and, and, and with the competition in Vegas, so is it for a, um, is it for like a, a bodybuilding cot, like not a, like a fitness cot, like a fitness show showcase or whatnot, or is that, is that where you guys going to be training? It's, it's a fitness expo. It's a, we will okay. be with Mr. Olympia. Oh, that's awesome. That's really one cool. Of, one of the, what is it? 40 plus sports that will be there. Yeah. It's going to be huge. Yeah. That's super awesome. exciting. So, and then it's also, a double header. So every team will play on Friday and Saturday. And that is actually, it's actually a very important double header because that's who, that's what dictates who goes to playoffs the next Oh, month. Very so, cool. Yeah. That's, super important matches. Yeah. And, um, one of the things I get when I do like CrossFit, like style movements or, or like, you know, like Olympic lifts or whatnot, a lot of the people in the bodybuilding space or like other, like, you know, bro, bro split spaces, like really, you know, poo poo CrossFit. So what do you say to those people that like poo poo CrossFit and like grid league movements and, you know, from what they typically do? You do you. <laughs> cool. Honestly, it doesn't affect me. And that's part of the emotional mastery. Like what they do, like, I don't care. Like I don't yeah. care what I'm doing. Right. Um, the one big thing though is, you know, like a lot of people are like, oh, it's the circus of CrossFit. Like grit, the grid is now like the circus of CrossFit. Like people already shit on CrossFit. And now people are like, oh, now it's a circus of whatever. It's 
But what we're doing, what, what CrossFit does is test your fitness, right? And that's not what grit is. We're not, we're not testing people's fitness. It's a sport. It's, it's an inner, it's for entertainment. This is a spectator sport. It's a race. Yeah. Yep. Like football or basketball, it is head to head against the other team. We're not testing anyone's fitness. We could care less what you do. We could care less how or what you train. That's what the sport of CrossFit is, is to test your fitness. We are testing nothing. It is entertainment. It's a race. That is all it is. Right? Yeah. You so, want the most points as possible. Right. Exactly. So it's what people care or say about the movements. I don't care makes no difference. There's not a single player that shits on it. They love it, you know? So, and the people that are grid fans absolutely love it. So it's like I said, it's like, everything's going to get backlash. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. True. I mean, I mean, even like doing like bodybuilding is the same thing. Like, Oh, you're on steroids or something like that. So it's, yeah, I could see that. Or yeah. have crossfitters make fun of bodybuilders, you know, like, Oh, go do your bicep curls, you know, like <laughs> it goes both ways. <laughs> true. 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 Um, so how do you, I know you're doing that fitness expo in Vegas and what else are you guys doing, um, for the grid league to grow and like get more eyes on your, on, on the grid league? Uh, every, so we try really hard to be in the past. We've like rented out a gym or a facility to put the matches in and that's not the best way to get eyes. So what we've done really well over the last couple of years is we try to get in with fitness expos. Mm -hmm. Right. So that way, like bystanders, like it's, it's almost impossible when a race is going on for someone to not stop and be like, Whoa, you know? Yeah. Yep. Um, so everything we're trying to do is a fit expo. So our very first, our opening match is in July in Orlando and it's also at an, a fitness expo. I think it's, what is that called? Like USA fit, but we have a couple expos in Orlando, but yeah, we, we just try to get within expos now. So that way more eyes are on it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, and TikTok, your tick uh, the the grid league TikTok has has like gone pretty big too as well. I think that was a huge huge thing for getting more eyes on on the, the grid league. Yeah, yeah, I know their socials are huge. I also I'm not a TikToker, so I actually don't really know what the TikTok <laughs> is. Um, yeah, I mean, all you see social media and the organic stuff is what. I mean, it's very appealing. You see someone doing like really fast burpees, like the it's crazy how many views the fast burpees get, or the burpee backflips, or you know. Um, it's intriguing. That's why it's like impossible not to stop when you see it, whether it's on social media or in person, it's, it's cool. It's exciting. Yeah, exactly. And and what are you guys doing to get like bigger sponsors to promote, like, you know, to sponsor your teams or, or sponsor the grid league? It's tough. Sponsorship is very tough. Um, as a team owner, it's because it's a new sport. I think people are very skeptical of like, what am I going to get? Like, how am I going to, you know, um, mm -hmm. It's just really like being able to communicate the benefits of what you get and obviously show them the growth that it's had in the last few years. Um, the uh, Getting the availability of just new eyes on that brand, whatever it is, that's really, it's just really comes down to communicating and like getting them to believe in the sport as much as all of the owners and players do. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, sponsorship is tough for a team standpoint and a league standpoint. That's been one of the biggest hurdles for sure. Yeah. And, and for, for your brand. So uh, have you had a bunch of people like asking to be sponsors for, for you and, and what kind of sponsors that do you, do you use to kind of, you know, that kind of fit with that you're the type of person that you want to be, or you are, sorry. I've never really had any big sponsors. I, I hate asking for money. I've tried to do a better job out of it this year of like getting a sponsor just for the season itself, just because we are traveling a lot more. Um, obviously that's money. Um, and I also try as a team owner, I've always tried to push to like help my players a little bit more than myself, but with going to Vegas and stuff, I've tried to push a little bit more this year. Yeah. Um, I also didn't do a very good job at it, but I'm also not married or to any brand or anything. Um, so it's really hard for me and I'm not like a huge supplement person. So it's been really hard. Like there's two things that are, I, okay, three things that I've like consistently like tried to get sponsorship for, and I've never been able to do it. Um, one is <laughs> this is gonna sound so ridiculous, but the amount of money we spend on um, seltzer water, so like Lacroix or Polar, I've tried so hard, I can't do it. They're not, they're not, they're not budging. Um, but that's like a daily thing for me. So I've tried really hard for them just cause I know I would do well and I drink them every day and I use them every day and people like, even when like, I, I compete, like I'll always bring one on the field with me. doesn't yep. matter grid or high rocks or whatever. Like I always have like a LaCroix or polar, like in my hand and people are like, how do you, 
How does your stomach not like if they explode? Oh, yeah. I don't know. I don't know, but like I don't drink regular water. That's all I drink. So like between them, Innovate, I love Innovate. Their shoes are just like top notch for me. Um, they're the most comfortable by far. I've never been able. I, I do a lot of shoots for Innovate, but I've never been sponsored by them. So that's also a bummer. And then um, I don't now because I chopped my hair off. But Junk, I'm a big headband fan. Obviously, ninety nine percent of my pictures I have a headband on. So. Those are like the three things where I would feel confident and like even like asking for a sponsorship. Yep. Um, but I've never been able to. So it's like I don't want to, I would never ask somebody for money if it's not something I'm like die hard for. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's not fair yeah. for the brand to like subpar it. So um Yeah, I hate I hate. So have you ever thought about Soda Stream? You want to know what? Soda we have one, we've tried it. It doesn't get nearly as many bubbles as I like. So, so I, I have one. So uh, I, here's my, here's my little trick to getting more bubbles on yours and in the, in the bottle. So you put in the bottle, you do four pumps uh, in of like the CO2, whatever that's in there, but you got to hold it a little longer. It's not like, you know, hit it and that's it. You got to hold it for like at least like two to three seconds up, hold it for another three seconds up and then like do that for four times. And I've noticed like a lot more bubbles in there. Yeah. Okay. I mean, literally it's get it's dusted for sure. We, but I do have one. It's been sitting there for a solid three years without being used though. Yeah. And, and I, I don't use flavor flavors or anything. Like that. I just keep it like just un, unflavored. Plain's my favorite flavor. Literally. Look at this. I even have a pop socket LaCroix on my phone. Plain. Nice. Plain. Plain. <laughs> <the best. laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Um, so um, we're getting close to the end. So I kind of got the the final thoughts. Um, so I know we kind of did it last year. Uh, no, two years ago. Gee, it's been like two years. It's crazy. Um, so what are your, I know you have a couple goals as a life coach. So what are your goals like as a life coach or fitness or even like outside of both of those realms but, uh, that you want to hit by the end of the year? My main, like I said, my main focus is life coaching and just like trying to build the awareness to help people, like to help people realize like they have that, like, that's my goal is I just want to help people be, get from old Briley thinking to new Briley thinking in their own way. Right. Just to help people realize that happiness is not anything external. It's everything within you to like become that. So like my goal is to just yep. help as many people as humanly possible. And I am launching something at the beginning of June that will hopefully kind of amplify that um because also life coaching like the one-on-one -on -one stuff like you only have so many hours in the day True. right so like you can't really help the masses by doing one-on-ones all day so it's like how do you do that it's group coaching it's launching communities and blah 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 so i am launching something called becoming unfazed on june 1st it's a 90-day process so like that's my huge goal and focus for like pretty much the rest of the year is like building that community um it's a school community um Yes. Launching June 1st. That's my focus. Like the rest of the year, I want to build that to like hundreds and hundreds of people. Like that's my that's awesome. end of the year goal for life coaching, um, fitness, do my best in grid. Um, that's it. Fitness goals. Okay. grid. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, and also selling your sweatshirts too, right? That was so random. The don't be a bitch stuff that I created like what five, six years ago. Like it's it's gonna be something. I know that that's eventually gonna be something too. I'm not letting the don't be a bitch stuff die because so many I think I had like sixteen hundred subscribers to don't be a bitch. Um it's yeah. just so like, compelling, you know. Um that'll be something eventually, but like I had a logo created for it and I just had someone put it on a sweatshirt and then I had so many requests for that that I was like, I mean the design looked really good. So I, so I have to admit, yeah, it looked really good. It's so good. So like literally I'm not selling those. That was a pre-order and done. Like it was only, and it was only because like the number of people that like reached out and was like, how do I get one of those? I was like, okay, I have to do something now. And it's, it's also going to help the small business. So I'm going to do it. Um, but yeah, maybe the don't be a bitch stuff will be a brand itself soon. But like I said, one focus, I can't, I can't keep distracting myself with too many things. It's, it doesn't help. <laughs> yeah. True. 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 Um, so do you have any favorite books you like to read? Yes. Um, I just got done with, um, the power of habit and the power of full engagement. Um, they're all literally what I work on every single day is like being able to emotionally disconnect. Um, don't let my emotions control me. And like, how can I use that to coach? Right. So it's like, it, it they help me be at like 
be better as a life coach and like ask more relevant, good questions to get my, my clients thinking. Um, and then I just read one, Ali Abdul. It's a, he, it's his new, new okay. book, but it's called feel good productivity. Very good book. Those are the okay. last two books that I've read and all top notch. <laughs> I, so, so I have a book that you should, you should read. It's called the success Princi principles. Um, it's the guy that made chicken soup for the soul. So it's his yeah. next, his next book. Um, I, I, I don't know the author's name, you know, don't shoot me, but, um, it's, it's really good. It was it like, it granted, it was like a 400 page book, but it was definitely, a, you know, I got, I got a lot of tidbits out of it. So cool. Yeah. Shoot me a message with that. Yeah. Well, looks. yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I have so many books. Like I literally have like a stack of 10 books that I, I have to read. It's just, I haven't had the chance to, to read it lately, but like, if I'm, if, if it's just my wife and I going on a beach and like chilling out, like I just sit in my chair, read the book, barely go in the water, just, just constantly read the whole time. Yeah. It's fun. It's good. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Um, so next question. So what is in your gym bag? Oh my gosh. My, the world's greatest gym bag, might I add, Haven. <laughs> You're not the first person that said that too, by the way. It's such a good gym bag. I'm looking right now. I have like, this is literally last week. I was like, I really need to get rid of some of these. I have like five pairs of knee sleeves. Totally unnecessary. Like, yeah. Totally unnecessary. Like, yeah, but some of them are for rope climb. Some of them are thicker and thinner. It depends on if I'm doing lunges or squats. I'm like, no, just get rid of them. You need one. That's fine. Um, thumb tape, applesauce, headphones, my airwave, wristies. I had that really bad wrist injury from Wadapalooza, and I just now... I'm starting to not use it two and a half years later. It's crazy. Um, chalk, jump rope, element, my salt. Um, Saris's flow. I'm, I've gotten, I'm testing out uh, like a pre-workout, but it's not like a stimulant. It's based off of like uh, beats. So it's supposed yeah. to like open up your, your lungs and your airwaves. So that way you can breathe better while you're doing metcons. Yeah. I, I think it's, I think it's like a vasodilator. So pretty much it, exp it expands like your blood vest, like your, your veins to get yeah. more blood flow in certain areas. So. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, chapstick, big chapstick wear when I work out, so I don't get caught in mouth or dry lips. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a pair of socks <laughs> for who knows why. Um, that's all I can see right now. I think that's pretty much it. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Next question. So I think, I think I told you, I think I asked you this last time, but um, let's just say it's your, it's the last thing on earth for you and you have all your friends around your bed. So how, how do you, how do you want people to know you as? Hopefully I'll have enough friends to, to gather my bed. And when that comes right now, I'm limited to one hand of friends, um, which is fine. Cause it's also like, part of like detaching from what's yeah. not good for you. Right. Um, yeah, exactly. No, just hopefully making them a better person. You know, I don't want to be, and I've thought about this really hard is I don't want to be that friend that like, and I'm not, I, I'm not that friend. I've changed from that friend. I'm not going to be that friend that will like sit. If you're having a problem or an issue, that'll just say, Oh, it's going to work out. Just, just trust the process. It'll work out. Like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to challenge you. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to ask you questions, you know, yeah. I'm going to make you be a better person. I'm not going to let you just sit on the background or sit on the sidelines and hope things are going to get better. Right. Yeah. Um, so I would just say, Hopefully they say thanks for making me a better person. Awesome. Uh, so last question. So where can people reach out to you if they want to get um, some help from you as a life coach or even like maybe possibly getting into the grid league or, you know, maybe having their first experience doing body, a bodybuilding competition. Like where can people reach out to you if they have any questions? Um, my Instagram, which is on my little yep, screen. Which is here, right. I can't, I can't point to it cause I'm not in that screen. So <laughs> There you go. Yeah. Or my email B at coach All right. Well, Hey, thank you for coming on the show. Um, I, I really do appreciate it. And I, I specifically don't do like early afternoon podcasts, but I only do it for you. So, <laughs> uh, well, thank you for coming on and like, listen, like if anybody has any questions about or like has any issues, like, and they want a need help for a life coach, seriously, like her Instagram is on point and she's very open and, you know, 
have, get her as your life coach. Thank you. I appreciate you. And thank you for making time for my morning since I'm such a morning person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. But uh, I'll catch you later. All right. Thanks so much, Tom.